and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at the 2023 multiple choice section of the higher paper. For question one, we're looking for the compound with the least ionic character. To do this, you need to look at page 12 of your databook where you can find the electronegativity values. The smallest difference in electronegativity will be the least ionic character. Sodium has an electronegativity of 0 0.9 and iodine has an electronegativity of 2.7. Potassium has an electronegativity of 0 0.8 and fluorine has an electronegativity of 4.0. This means that the smallest difference in electronegativity is between sodium and iodide, making A your answer. For question 2, we're looking for which of these compounds would not have hydrogen bonding. For hydrogen bonding to occur, you need to have an OH, NH or HF bond. We need to look at these compounds and see which of them does not have one of these bonds. D is an ether and does not have an OH bond. For question 3, we're looking at the structure of fats. Fats are formed from glycerol molecules and fatty acid molecules. Here is an example of a structure of a fat. We have a condensation reaction between glycerol and the fatty acids. We can see the glycerol on the left hand side. This is a triol. It has three hydroxyl groups attached. This means that three fatty acid groups can attach onto the glycerol. This makes the ratio of glycerol to fatty acids 1 to 3. In question 4, we're looking at an energy diagram. We're trying to find which of these has a value of 150 kilojoules per mole. For the activation energy of the reverse reaction, we're going from the 50 up to the 200. So the activation energy will be plus 150. The enthalpy change of the reverse reaction will be the products of that reaction minus the reactant. So that is 150 minus 50, which is plus 100. The activation energy of the forward reaction is the distance between the reactants and the top of the hill. So 200 minus 150 to give plus 50. And finally, the enthalpy change for the forward reaction is the products of that reaction minus the reactants. So 50 minus 150 to give negative 50. This means that our answer is the activation energy of the reverse reaction, A. Question 5, we're looking at rate reactions. Here we're trying to find the concentration when the reaction time was 10 seconds. The graph is shown with rate, 1 divided by time. So we need to do the calculation 1 divided by 10 to find the rate, which is 0 0.1. We can then use this value with the graph to find the concentration is 0 0.25 C. For question 6, we're looking at diagrams of concentrations of reactants against time in reversible reactions. We are to look for a diagram which shows what happens if we add a catalyst. A catalyst will allow the reaction to get to equilibrium quicker. However, it will not change the overall concentration of the reactant at the end of the reaction. This means that the answer will be B. For question 7, we're looking at an enthalpy calculation. We are given the enthalpy of combustion of methanol and the gram formula mass. We have been told that methanol has been burned to produce 145.2 kilojoules. This means that we need to calculate the number of moles of methanol to be able to calculate the mass of methanol. To do this, we will do 145.2 kilojoules divided by 726 kilojoules per mole. This will give the number of moles that was burned as 0 0.2. We can then use this number and multiply by the gram formula mass to find the mass of methanol which was used. This comes out to be 6.4 grams. In question 8, we're looking for which of the following statements is true. For a sodium atom, we have the electron arrangement 281 and the ion is 28. For a chloride ion, we have the electron arrangement 288 and the atom is 287. For a magnesium ion, we have the electron arrangement 28 and the atom is 282. And for an oxygen atom, we have the electron arrangement 286 and then the oxide ion is 288. This means that the sodium ion is smaller than the sodium atom and statement A is therefore true. Which of the following structures is never found in compounds? Compounds are substances which are made of two or more elements which are chemically bonded together. This means that the structure which is never found in compounds is monatomic. This is because this is made of only single atoms and therefore cannot have two or more elements bonded together.
In question 10, we're looking for an isomer of hexanol. Let's start by drawing the structure of hexanol. Hexanol has six singly bonded carbons and has a carbonyl group on carbon number one. We therefore have a formula for hexanol of C6H12O. The best place to start with these sorts of questions is to have a look at the formulas. Check for the number of carbons first and eliminate any which do not have six carbons. Answer A, 2-methylbutanol, only has 5 carbons and therefore can be eliminated. Answer B has 3-methylpentantuone. This means this has 6 carbons, so is a potential answer. Answer C, 2-2-dimethylbutanol, also has 6 carbons, so is a potential answer. Answer D, 3-3-dimethylpentanol, has 7 and therefore can be eliminated. Of the two options which are available, 3-methylpentantuone has the formula C6H12O. This is a ketone, which is an isomer of an aldehyde. In question 11, we're looking at what happens when two amino acids react in a condensation reaction to form a peptide link. To do this, we lose the OH group from the carboxyl side and we lose one of the hydrogens from the amino side. In question 12, we're looking for an equation which represents an enthalpy of combustion. The definition of enthalpy of combustion is the energy released when one mole of a substance is burned completely in oxygen. This means that only B and D are possible answers. To burn completely in oxygen, we need to produce carbon dioxide and water. In question 13, we're looking at two flasks in a water bath. One flask contains ethanol and ethanoic acid, and the other contains ethyl ethanoate and water. We're to look at what happens to the flasks after a few days. The ethanol and ethanoic acid in flask A will combine to produce ethyl ethanoate and water. This is a reversible equilibrium reaction. In flask B, the ethyl ethanoate and water will react to form ethanol and ethanoic acid. This is also a reversible and equilibrium reaction. This means that after a few days, both flasks will contain ethanol, ethanoic acid, ethyl ethanoate and water. In question 14, we're balancing a redox equation. On the left, we have 2 minus plus 12 for our charge. On the right, we have no charge. This means that we need to calculate the overall charge on the left-hand side, which is plus 10. This means we need 10 electrons to balance this equation. For question 15, we're looking at types of reaction. Here we're comparing two different molecules. We can see that the molecule on the left is an alcohol and the molecule on the right is a carboxylic acid. This means we have had an oxidation reaction. In question 16, we're looking at gas chromatography. Here we have different dyes which are going through gas liquid chromatography. The time taken to go through the column, the retention time, depends on the polarity of the molecule. The more polar the molecule, the longer the retention time. Therefore, Z, which has the shortest retention time, must be a non-polar or less polar molecule than the others. If we have a look at the structures, we're looking for something which is non-polar. A contains OH groups, which are polar. C contains OH groups, as does D, whereas B does not. For question 17, we're looking at measuring the enthalpy of combustion of ethanol we have to find which of these would not improve the accuracy of the result. Using a draft shield would improve the accuracy by preventing heat loss. Moving the thermometer would improve the accuracy as you would be measuring the temperature of the water rather than the can. Using a glass beaker instead of a copper can would not improve the accuracy of the result as glass does not conduct heat as well as copper. Stirring the water would improve the accuracy as you would get a more even temperature throughout the water. For question 18, we're looking for the best description of the ball-like structure called a micelle, which is formed when soap is added to an oil and water mixture. A soap is made up of a hydrophilic head and a hydrophobic tail. The head will dissolve in the water and the tail in the oil, so we can eliminate C and D immediately. The description for A, it says the non-polar head dissolves in water. This is not true. In the description for B, it says the ionic head dissolves in water, which is the case, and the non-polar tail dissolves in oil, which is also true. This means that B is the best description. 
For question 19, we'll need to look at the solubility table. Nickel oxide is insoluble and nickel sulphate is soluble. This means that when the nickel oxide is added to the sulfuric acid, some excess will be left behind. We'll remove this by filtration. The soluble nickel sulphate can then be obtained by evaporation. In question 20, we're looking at which of the compounds would react with sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide is a base, and to react to form a salt, we would require an acid. Question 21, we're looking for the structural formula for a primary alcohol. Primary alcohol has the hydroxyl group at the end of a chain on carbon 1. In A, this is on carbon 2, making it a secondary alcohol. On B, it's on carbon 3, also a secondary alcohol. On C, it's at a branch point, making it a tertiary alcohol. But on D, it is on carbon 1, making it a primary alcohol. For question 22, we're looking at the reduction of 4 methyl pentan 2 ohm. The structure of 4 methyl pentan 2 ohm has 5 carbons singly bonded, and on carbon 2 we have a carbonyl group, and on carbon 4 we have a methyl group. When we reduce this back to the corresponding alcohol, we make 4 methyl pentan 2 ol. To do this, we add on 2 hydrogen atoms. This would weigh 2 grams, so for each mole we would gain 2 grams. This is answer A. Which of the following gas samples has the same volume as 16 grams of oxygen? To have the same volume, there must be the same number of moles. Let's calculate the number of moles of 16 grams of oxygen. Each mole of oxygen weighs 32 grams. Therefore, 16 grams is half a mole. For each of the gases, we need to calculate the gram formula mass and the number of moles. A is carbon monoxide, CO. This has a gram formula mass of 28. This means the number of moles is 21 divided by 28, which is 0 0.75 moles. B is carbon dioxide, CO2. This has a gram formula mass of 44, meaning that there is one mole within the 44 grams. C is nitrogen dioxide, with a gram formula mass of 46, so this is also one mole. And D is dinitrogen tetroxide, N2O4. This has a gram formula mass of 92, and therefore has a number of moles of 0 0.5. In question 24, we're looking for the number of moles of positive ions and 0.25 moles of aluminium sulphate. The formula for aluminium sulphate is Al2SO4-3. This means that for one mole of aluminium sulphate, there are two moles of positive ions. If we have 0.5 moles of aluminium sulphate, then there will be 0.5 moles of positive ions. In question 25, we're looking at the addition of hydrogen chloride to an alkene. This is a problem-solving question. You're given the information about where the H and the Cl will add on to the alkene. The H will add on to the carbon with the most hydrogen atoms already attached, and the chlorine will add on to the other carbon. As you can see here in the diagram, the H will add on to carbon 3 and the chlorine on to carbon 2. We then need to compare this to the structures given in the answer. B will therefore be the correct answer. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on X at Miss Adams Chem, Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry and TikTok Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos, flashcards and quick videos. Bye for now!